yeah, so you then you're looking to sell the business? So I had a woman approach me. It was one year of negotiations. <laughs> a year? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so in the 11th hour, I get a call from her attorney and she's getting cold feet. I'm like, okay. So you just left with what? I fell to my knees crying. This is Start Up the Storefront, the podcast where we talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about the untold challenges of scaling a business. We're now on episode 11, and we have a favor to ask from you. If you like this show, don't keep it a secret. Tell a friend about us, and if you haven't already, head over to the podcast app to give us a rating and a review. It really does go a long way in helping us get the word out. We've got great guests every week who offer candid looks at what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur, and hopefully you can take something away from their lessons. Today's guest is Jacqueline Bradley, founder of Apothin, an independent candle and apothecary studio. She has a special offer for all of you that I'll let her tell you about. For all of these Startup to Storefront listeners, we are offering 30% plus free shipping on your first candle order. Use the code STARTUP at checkout. I've been using her candles for a couple of weeks now and can honestly say that my house has never smelled so good. Head on over to apothin.com to shop her collection. Now, back to the episode. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. We have Jacqueline from Apothin, a new candle company that you're launching. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. We've talked a little bit. You've been an entrepreneur for 13 years and, and your first introduction to it was a clothing company, right? Correct. Yeah. I started my own clothing companies in Michigan. And, and, and you were doing it remotely, you said. Yeah. I lived in Los Angeles and I, for 13 years almost, 12, um, ran the stores long distance. Wow. How'd you do? So originally you were a buyer in the clothing world. Is that? Yeah, I started out. Well, I moved to LA to be an actress, okay. and after about two years, I was like, "Well." But you did it, right? You did some acting. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. What'd you do? <laughs> Care to share? <laughs> you know, yes. So I I was on the first internet series. So now there's so many YouTube series and internet series, but we were a scripted show specifically on the platform of Sprint Phones. Cool. And we actually won a new media Emmy wow. years later. Emmy award-winning guest today. That's amazing. Yes. So wow. Thanks they called so us much. Like, I want to say it was like four years ago. And they're like, we really love what you guys did. You were like pioneers in the space. Could you come out to New York and present for like new media Emmys? And they're like, yeah. Sure. Who was on that show with me? I mean, yeah. I saw people that I was like, God, I was in 18 years old. Wow. Do you have an Emmy? Do you, is, do you have a physical? No, I think okay. our producers got Kept it. whatever it was. You got to keep yeah. it. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. That's so star. cool. So you left acting at some point? You I didn't, did. You didn't well, like it? You wanted to do something else? Yeah, it felt, it felt weird. So I'm classically theater trained. Okay. So I worked my entire life in the theater. Okay. Went to a private school for theater. People went off to New York to pursue their careers there, go to school. We had already gotten what would be a four-year education in performing arts and theater. We knew everything wow. from lighting, makeup, set design. It wasn't just acting. Uh, okay. Writing. We had to know everything. All the hats. Yes. So by the time I was 18, I was like, I just got an education. Wow. This. Why would I go spend four years somewhere else yeah. getting a duplicate? No, it sure. makes no sense. So I had a one-way ticket to L.A., and from, from Michigan. Michigan, yeah, awesome, yeah. It, I brought and had you been here before and... or no? Never. So one way ticket, you've never been here before, Correct. and you're like, I'm gonna do it. It was that's like great. on my vision board growing up. I was wow. like, that's where I'm moving. Everyone knew it about me too. They're like, Jacqueline's moving to LA. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm too um, cool for Michigan. That's awesome <laughs> to have that kind of conviction at a young age. Totally, it's really cool. And I don't know that I really wanted to come here and act, but because I. That's what I had done for years. I yeah. told right. people that's what I was going to come do. Yeah. It's a logical jump. Yeah. 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 And it was just, it was tough. I mean, mm-hmm. anyone will say that, but when you work so hard at something and it's not giving anything back to you, I just got, yeah, my spirit was broken after a while. Okay. And I stopped only because I started working for a woman in Beverly Hills who had clothing stores. Cool. And she took me under her wing and we basically, I would shadow her. And for about a year, I shattered everything she did. And then she would go to, like, Paris to go buy jewelry. And she was like, well, the clothing is up to you. And we bought weekly. Things would turn over so quickly. And What year that, was this? This was 2006. 2006. Okay. And so a year into that, though, I was like, oh, I could do this for myself. Yeah. Yeah. You liked it. You liked yeah, buying new clothing. It. What kind of clothing? Was it a it specific was women's fashion? Young contemporary. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what that means, but I think, what we wear. I think yeah. people do. <laughs> this. Well, You'd be in there, too. Men's I'm a young contemporary? contemporary? Great. Yes. Great. Thank yeah. you. Neutrals, got it. Yes. <laughs> Close that fit. a lot of apothecary goods too and accessories. Amazing. 
I've actually carried all my competitors now. Yeah, I, I worked for her a year into it. I was like, I called my mom and I was like, I'm going to open a clothing store. Like, this is the jam. These margins mm-hmm. are insane, mom. She's like, what is what's margin? Yeah, like, great. And you're like, don't worry about it. It's going to be great. Yes. Yeah. She's like, okay, great. In LA, how are you going to do this? I was like, oh, I'm doing it in Michigan. You're moving back? And I was like, absolutely not. I'm moving back to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> and I run these long distance. And I say these because they're going to be in two stores. Amazing. And, and so the, the thought process was you're in LA and you're, you, you, in some way you're like ahead of the fashion curve, right? And so you're thinking if this works here. Because you're buying for trends. You're buying right. for what's going on. You're going to be yeah. introducing that to the I Michigan market. Fish there. Right. right. Also, totally. And they were yeah. a little bit behind. But also, as you guys know, with seasons, like we don't have any here yeah and but i understood seasons there it's totally like some buyer from out here being like, yeah i know what the midwest wants like yeah no. i know what they want because you're they from there pay for things. it's yeah. funny so right outside here there's our neighbors are putting like halloween like spider webs it's and so pumpkins weird. and i'm looking at it like this is the strangest thing because in so new weird. england the leaves turn colors yeah. and right. it gets colder mm-hmm. and the things make sense. Right. I drove by a pumpkin patch the other day and I was like, this just looks fake. And this is not fair. Yeah. yeah. It yeah next to a palm tree. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you guys don't know what fall is. Yeah. So then how did, so you did you buy, did you sign a lease? Did you, how did your mom look for office space? What was that like? So I joke that my mom A retail did space. Right? A retail space, yeah. She did. She's a commercial loan officer. So she kind of knew the area well. Yeah. And she was like, where are you going to do this? I was like, the town you were in. It was not the town that I grew up in. Okay. It was Midland, Michigan. And that's sort of Dow Corning, Dow Chemicals headquarters. Okay. So a lot of transplants, a lot of people missing their big city life, I think. And yep. there was nothing there. Like wow. in 2006 in a smaller town. Wow. So she found a space, one of her clients wanted to put someone in the other half of their space. Okay. So they had bought the building, they had a music center, and then nothing in this other side. But it was also at the far end of Main Street. And I was like, Mom, no one walks this far. Yeah. Mm. But it was all that we could find. Yeah. And I learned very quickly about destination and people yeah. then drove that far and they certainly did walk that so far. So you created a destination. Yes. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, all of the stores were actually destinations. Not That's amazing. Was in this, like, what was the name of the store? Booming area. It was Athalia's Boutique. Cool. Athalia. What is another cool name? Who's Athalia? Yeah. Wow. Is Athalia? So Athalia's. I wanted an A. I don't know why. I think it was still <laughs> back in the days of like phone books being the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, my sense. sister came up with the name. It's okay. sort of a. It's a Greek mythology name. We're not Greek. And she. This is sort of a sweet, sad story. Um, she had lost um, her first baby, oh. and she was going to name her Athalia. So I was oh. like, well, let's keep this name alive. In yeah. The family. It's a beautiful name. So it yeah. meant a lot to us. Um, yeah. When people ask, I'm like, oh, it's just Greek mythology. Yeah. It's super good luck. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. In hindsight, I, I would have been more thoughtful with the name. Ah, uh, did I have another A name? I did not. I just <laughs> thought of that. There's themes here. Yeah. Yeah. So we started out in that one location. And after two years, another spot in the middle of the street became available. And I... I picked up and moved it in two days, the entire store. Wow. How like much? all the fixtures. And you did that remotely or did you fly back? No, I flew back. I okay. go back once a month. Okay. How much inventory did you have to buy up front? Do you remember? Was it like a $5,000? No, it was a lot more. Okay. To so wow. fill the space. So I started mapping out. I think, you know, Apple does this really well. They take their square footage and they want every square, every square foot to be X amount profitable. Yes. And so I started doing that and realized I needed twenty five thousand dollars in inventory. Okay. Um, I needed every. Was it just footage. clothing, or was it also like you there said was it was some apothecary. accessories? Yeah. yeah. There was some apothecary. It was sort of the beginning days of what Anthro does yeah. well. Yeah. Anthropology. And, yeah. Great store. So you're buying twenty five thousand dollars worth of inventory. Yes. And hoping it works out. And All then... on credit cards. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Like 0% credit cards at <laughs> yes. least. Like for a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In so, your name or other people's name? <laughs> no, just kidding. In my name. My mom was so generous too. She was like, if you need anything. So I think she she helped with the build outs and things like that. Awesome. And she had yeah. friends who could do it. And you knew it would local. work. You had seen the person in Beverly Hills do it well. And so you thought, well, yeah. if yeah. we do half, I guess the margins. And the rents are way lower there story so <laughs> yes. yeah what are the rents were they yeah. like 25 percent of what la rents were oh god not even so that first space i paid wow. 900 a month for. no how yeah. many square feet was it that one was 1300 square feet what the next space i moved I that's moved a san to. francisco studio that's, no, that's, that's a san not, francisco mansion that's a closet yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the closet <laughs> yeah maybe this dining room yeah. yeah and then the second space i think went up to 200 bucks 
And then this killer deal came through. This woman who my mom knew was like, I'm building this new plaza on the other side of town, literally cornfields behind it. But that's the Midwest for you. Yeah. Would you want to be sort of this anchoring store? Can I get you to come in? Oh, the anchor tenant. Very nice. Yeah. How big was that store? Oh my God, it was huge. 3,000 square feet. Wow. And now do the math on how much inventory yeah. that's going to take. Yeah. How, how quickly did you see a return on your 25,000? Or at least you recouped your initial... Like from like opening day? Six months. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it took that's a little great. while. Yeah, it took a little bit. You were introducing it to the market. And yeah. it's because I wasn't there. So we yeah. had no one working for free. You yeah. know, a lot of people will go in and work in their own right. businesses. Yeah. And right. that's helpful. I couldn't do that. I didn't want to be the one to do that. Yeah. And... It took a step, you know, yeah. and, and that's that's what it was. We wanted to treat them well. That mm-hmm. was my first lesson at 22 years old. And yeah. how to run a business is to treat people that work for you yeah. the best you can. And mm-hmm. this is cash biz. I mean, right? Like a p- large percentage of your money coming in is cash. Absolutely. It's 2006. Yep. Right? Square isn't even out yet. Yep. And so people wrote checks. To yeah, us. Wow. yeah. We're You're still doing, doing the like credit card thing. thing and writing driver's license number and wow, you know, all that stuff. So we had QuickBooks. For our accounting, and I think it allowed you to run sales That's through great. it, but it was almost too much of a pain, mm-hmm. sort of pain in the ass to yeah. Like, yeah. do that, totally. to like manually be like, okay, right. and here's your receipt on a printed 8 by 10 yeah. piece of paper. Right. Did right. you have write-out receipts? Like we did were, in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Uh-huh. The carbon copy. Cool. So it took about six months, and during that time, were you, you're, I imagine, introducing new inventory the entire time, so you're still investing. Yes. In buying. And, yeah. yeah. And, and are we you- opened in October of 2006. Okay. So it was cool to kind of, and I recommend this for anyone. It's a great month to open. It seems like every time I've launched Because of the holidays? Yeah. Yeah, issues. everyone's like fresh and excited. And yeah. Like, the seasons yeah. are changing, at least there. People are back to school. There's yeah. no fractured focus for them. Yep. And you're gearing up for holidays. It's the worst mm-hmm. time to open a brewery. Is it? Yes. Why? Why? Because during, so what happened, well, quick tangent, what happens on breweries or distilleries um, or even coffee shops is during the holidays, most people want to save their money for gifts. Mm-hmm. And so they want to go buy retail. Right. And your, your clothing. <laughs> yes. And so they stop going to bars as much. Interesting. Yeah. And they start drinking usually at tax day when they get their refund back. Wow. So hmm. like. Party in the spring. If you look yeah, at. Brewery, what, about, what about what about like Christmas party season? And everything? Yeah, no, it doesn't work. No, the brewery oh, season wow. is like April to Thanksgiving. Oh. I didn't know you guys had a season. Yeah. That's fascinating. Which is the but opposite if it's still of like Thanksgiving, e-commerce. then October would be good, right? I'm just yeah. giving you the data. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Hmm. Yeah. So so anyway, you're opening in what October. You're taking advantage of the holidays. And... Yes. Holiday was incredible. Yeah. And like I said, we're the big fish. Yes. And people love that. And the cool spot. Shop. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know who our number one clientele is? Hairdressers. Really? Huh. Yeah. Because they get to wear what they want. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and they want to look good. They have, they're almost like the bartender kind of yeah. world where it's like cash on hand. So that's where a lot of the cash would come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a couple women who from salons, and there's so many salons, it's like churches there. Yeah. There's like one on every single corner. Yeah. 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 like, I'm like, are this many people getting their hair done? Yeah. Right. Here? right. Um, so they were a big clientele and I would cater to that. So I kind of, mm-hmm. I was learning who they were. Yep. And never once people were like, you know, do you think you should be in your business? I designed it so I didn't have to be yep. from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And when I would come in once a month, it was, we would throw like some kind of party. Not like nice. Jack Means here, yeah. but right. you know, we do event. some kind of event. Yeah. Sure. And that was before I think like experiential things were big. Like now you can go to any pop-up or whatever, but we were right. always hosting another business in there. Cool. Yeah. Or having cocktails yeah. and all of that. So that's fun. Did the yeah, financial downturn impact you in any way? So Michigan, it was right. It was Massive. interesting, but it didn't. Okay. Um, it didn't affect my business. And wow. people were like, wow, you were in business during that time. Why do you in think Michigan. that is? My hairdressers still kept coming in. People will still buy what they want. And my prices were affordable. Mm-hmm. So they probably stopped a few of their luxury things. Yeah. Okay. They started, um, and I, I paid attention to that too. I stopped getting high-end denim and like the leather and the boots and yes. things like that. Mm-hmm. And started getting pieces under $30. Okay. Nice. Uh, and that worked. And even though that was a little more fast fashion than I would have liked, I knew I had to do that to stay in business. Yeah. yeah and so you, you shifted to accommodate that that change for yeah. that time period. Yeah. We Whoop. used to say you can get anything in there under 100 which is still... yeah amazing uh but then to be able to go in and get almost anything for 30 dollars that's amazing that's amazing yeah wow. what i'm would sure you your with, clients appreciated that yeah with yeah, any time. excess inventory at, like were you thinking i'm just trying to think out loud here but any were you making a website or were you shipping it back to la what, 
So anything that wasn't moving or if like the season all of a sudden now wasn't appropriate, I would have them ship it back here. And okay. I would just like literally unload it in my living room and my friends would come over. So everyone's nice. my biggest network was What a here. good friend. Yeah. Nice. But I could recoup my cost. Yeah. And then I would just roll that right back in. Yeah. Okay. I actually only ever had one small clearance rack the entire time I was in business. That's and amazing. if it didn't fit on there, it stayed at full price or we'd bring it to LA and my friends would dig through it. Yeah. And nice. I'd get my cost back. Yeah. That's so smart. That is smart. Once you start to do things on sale, it becomes tough because you educate the customer on yeah, that your value. JC Penny built a whole business on it. Everything was always on sale, yeah. and it worked. But yeah, until it didn't. Holes <laughs> with that too. You or bed bath, you wait for a coupon yeah. like that, right. and it, it wasn't. You're conditioned. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, it is. Did you go online at any point, or were you thinking of? We we made a website, so we all really have to imagine 2006, 2007, yeah. 2008. Right. Yeah, this is um, clunky. Clunky. Yeah, we just put up a bunch of images with our address, how to contact us. But in that world, and I'm sure a lot of people who have smaller boutiques, you know, would, would say the same, inventory turns over so quickly that by the time you photograph it, yeah. you're just disappointing people unless yeah. you're mm. buying in such large quantities. Right. You're like, well, we have one extra small and one large left. Right. And that's it. And that's yeah. what you're posting. Yeah. It wasn't really worth our time. Were yeah. You, this that is funny. <laughs> Were you using MySpace or Facebook for your business? We did. So everyone that worked for me outside of my store manager was still in college. Okay. And Facebook was like the, the rage, 2004, was. 5, 6. Yeah. And I think in the beginning, you had to have a college email. Yes. You did. So yeah. like, that was part of the interview. You'd get invited. On Facebook, yeah. college email. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And you post about us. Yeah. Oh, and I got wow. on the board at their school. So that was a big part too. So cool. the university there was, they had a really big fashion merchandising department. Okay. So I got on their board and I helped dictate the curriculum. And I don't wow. really have a degree in fashion merchandising. But yeah. you have a store and a brand. So. No. And I yeah. knew what our customers would want. And so my guarantee to that department was I would always hire as many interns, paid interns, yep. through their, their department. As long as I could kind of stay on the board and help, yeah. you know. And that's a great that. way to get the best of the best in that in that yeah. world right there at your fingertips. That's great. Smart. And yeah. was it just you or did you have a business partner involved in the clothing company? No business partner. So okay. as I wanted to transition out, so 10 years goes by. I'm exhausted. You know, mm-hmm. flying to Michigan once a month, having to wake up on East Coast time every day, opening the store with them in real time, just sort of fielding calls, yeah. looking at reports. I would go by daily because I noticed that worked for the woman I used to work for. So how did that impact your day-to-day schedule in LA? Trying um, to buy for the, the I'd shops? Get up five, six in the morning, look at the reports, and then I would head downtown and I'd start buying by like nine o'clock. They would wow. get a new shipment every single week. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, and I would do a lot of what I could here. So I would get it entered into the system. Eventually yeah. we did move over to a POS system. Yeah. It got really sophisticated after a while, but I would do all that. That way they could spend time on the floor getting With it out customers. and selling it. Yeah. You know, not, I hated walking in stores and seeing girls like tagging yeah. and doing other things and not paying attention to the customer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have the luxury of having more than one person on the floor at a time. Yeah. So I did that sort of back end work for them. So you, so 9 a.m. you're buying and then... You're shipping daily or weekly or? Um, I'd come back. It, this is, I mean, I was, merchandise is heavy. Yeah. yeah. So I was packing it up in 20 by 20 boxes and then bringing those boxes to FedEx by myself. How many Probably boxes? Like, like 10 at a time. Maybe wow. Like 50 wow. pounds. So wow. you're like a professional mover. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it. when I go to visit, I only flew Southwest because yeah. they give you the two big bags for free. And right. I load those with merchandise oh. and I would just use my carry-on for personal thing. Yeah. So then it was free shipping. Southwest building when, entrepreneurs. I didn't know <laughs> so, Southwest. Oh yeah, that we so for my my project sites, a lot of them are outside of the state. Yeah. And my crews fly all over the country. Michigan, we just did a job uh, in Grand Rapids and yeah. they fly all over and we try to fly them southwest as much as possible. They just brought like two tool cases and, and stuff mm. out to uh, Iowa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it does. That's yeah. It's move. a huge tip. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I had yeah. no idea. And yeah, so you then you're looking to sell the business? So I had a woman approach me and asked if I could consult. She wanted to open stores. She wanted to open stores in my area. And asked and you to consult. Or that's okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, you know, in your area in Michigan? Where to the compete other, with you. In our, like, they call it the Tri-Cities. Okay. So, like, in the Tri-City area. Okay. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to just create my own competition. No. Here. And literally a light bulb went off. I was like, you're tired of this. Sell it to her. Like, mm-hmm. easy. Yeah. Like, She's trying to create that for herself anyway. Right. Yeah. And of course, I, I'll give anyone advice. Yeah. But I mean, that was a little too close to home. Yes. Like, literally, you want to build a store seven miles away. So I, I 
presented that to her, not even, I thought she'd laugh or something. She was like, that's a great idea. I didn't want to ask you, but you know, <laughs> she didn't like, want to ask. Yeah. You know, she just uh, wanted what I had. This is a great, great lesson to <laughs> always ask and to always you know put your foot out there. You never know. Like what if she planted is the holding seed? Back, you know? I disagree. Why? What if what if it was her idea the whole time, but she wanted you to say it? Okay, that's well, fine. That's but fine. Like I'm just saying. Okay. There's but, an inception you, component. You would have had to have the wherewithal and the and have it in your head to be like, I think this is going to be a better option for me. Yes. So to like, always put it out there. What would she possibly pay me to consult? Right. I mean, right. I, I can get ten times that out of her. Yeah. You know, instantly. Right. Right. So, you're, so you're interested, or she's and interested not have in your brand suffer in the process, right? <laughs> what, what's your first step? You guys start reviewing the financials, or we do. So I, I need to come up with what the business was worth. Yeah. Um, and how did you I do that? So quickly, as we're doing <laughs> it, it's like goodwill is a big part of this. Like, yeah, it really is. And like, what do you mean by that? So I, I realized that I was a big part of it as well, and what I had built. Oh, so got it. right. More so the customer base, the loyalty, the employees that I had, yep. the relationship with the university, all of that was like built up. And how do you put a price on like, listen, like I have an intern system right. set up, like maybe you could take right. my board seat or whatever, like things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you replace your impact there right. and know that it's all going to go to a good place and they have good intentions? You can't, right? So, so at the end of the day, you just have to model your valuation based on your revenue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of it was, you know, just arbitrary in that way and I was like well prove me otherwise yeah I think that's worth 20,000 what do you yeah. think it's worth okay right. and she'd come back and say something it was one year of negotiations <laughs> a year yeah wow and in that time was she trying to build her own thing still or no did she table that to find out if she this tabled was gonna work? okay I, this seemed like this was really gonna happen yeah okay. she was dead set on a third location where okay. she originally wanted her first store to be so what we ended up, we came up with a number. It was probably about 30% less than I really would have wanted. Okay. And I'm sure it was 30% more than she really wanted to pay. Yeah. That's how you meant it at all. Yeah. Was it like one or two times revenue? I just decided at the end of it, even though we broke it down, it was one times revenue oh. in a year. And at that point, we were doing a quarter million dollars for one store. Okay. okay. And we added in a second store. And then I said also, I would stay on as a consultant because yes. we realized too, it was my eye that kept this going, my right. access to things quickly in Los Angeles. So yeah. I also put myself in there and I had a job lined up for the yeah. next year, which mm -hmm. was great. Yeah. I thought that was cool because I didn't really want to part that quickly. No. Them. And yeah. were you still buying for them? No. Yes, I'd still yeah. stay the buyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the 11th hour, I get a call from her attorney and she's getting cold feet. When I say the 11th hour, so I, Jean Pierre, he's my. Say husband, partner, life partner. We've been there for 12 years. We're not married but engaged. So people are like, What's that? I'm like, it's yeah. totally on Kurt Russell. But yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> JP decides, he's like, Wow, like this is amazing. Like something's finally paid off. I think I could take a break. I'm gonna go to Italy with my friends. Wait, what? Yes. And like, not really on my dime, but kind of. He's yeah. Like, Wait, what? We're going to be good for a while. <laughs> yeah. this is before, so it, before it happens. Nothing signed. And he's yeah. on, on, on his way to Italy. Huge lesson. Effectively. In Italy. And I get this call. JP, and come like, on. I, what time is it in Italy? Yeah. So at first I'm like, but, but you're home and you're you're like, well, well, okay, screw me. I just built yes. up this huge business and now I'm selling it. I have this opportunity. You're going to Italy, but you're here. He's the first to celebrate. In my mind, I was like, maybe I'll this like, is so strange. This is a red flag to me. I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. Well, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so So he's that well, I get this call. Yeah. And, and when you, you say the eleventh hour. Just so you know, never do that. <laughs> I don't never do I that. don't have it in me to first of all, <laughs> let's start with this. As an entrepreneur, I'm literally very frugal, mm -hmm. just naturally. Oh yeah. I'm, everything you I'm see here is Natalia's mm -hmm. I have bougie a passion. Entrepreneurship it's not bougie. world. So it's, I could live in a shoe. That's box. from a flea market. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And you never sell. Yeah. I mean, in real estate, you learn this quite literally. I, and, I got and you this learned it, right? You don't celebrate. In San Francisco for free from some random. You don't guy. celebrate at all until there's signatures. <laughs> yes. Done, done. So yeah. in your like case. Money in the bank where you're like. Right. right the wire, wire has gone you through. Move it from like your savings, your checking, like yes. it's real money, it moves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's real money. When you say the 11th hour, was the signature like expected that day? That day. Okay, and yeah. you get a call in the morning. And that she doesn't want to go through with the deal. That's so, insane. Hard no. And this is after a year? It's not, we'd like to revisit some points. Like, oh, 
we can we can wait. Uh, is this an emotional response to everything? And he's like, this is, you know, it's her decision at the end of the day. I was like, Was this the first time you had spoken to the lawyer or were you guys in contact? We were in contact just going back and forth between okay. his lawyer and my lawyer, Got you it. know, uh, with the terms yeah. okay. of everything. Good enough guy. I mean, yeah. he was like, I'm so sorry. He didn't update you before this? There was no, like, mumblings of this at all? No. So then do you contact the owner at some point? He said she wished not to be contacted right now. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you just what left with what? Well, I fell to my knees crying. So oh. before I angrily called JP, like, get back over here. I, yeah. Naturally. I, because all of a sudden, I'm like, well, this was a year of my life that I spent literally going to bat for my business. Like, yeah. you know, what I built, why it's worth this dollar. Why, okay, I'll take a discount there. And mm. it, it was exhausting. Yeah. I had said goodbye to my staff. Oh, it's going to make me emotional just thinking about it. Yeah, wow. Essentially, it's emotional. they were part of the deal. Like, they could choose to stay if they wanted to, but, you know, they were... They weren't going to be welcomes. fired. Or, yeah. yeah. And it, it just, to then, it almost felt like, too, I was like, I have to walk back in and be like, no deal. Uh, yeah. I am back. Hey. Here. Just kidding. Boss. Yeah. <laughs> And not only that, I started to make other plans with my life because that was so many years of my life doing that. Yeah, And sure. I didn't know what I wanted to do with with that money, but I, I knew it wasn't necessarily that. And I just wanted a moment to breathe again and yeah. sort of figure it out and find more purpose in what I was Watch doing. Us. But because I had already disconnected, I was like, I'll just That's close. That's so tough. So you closed? Well... I, I didn't tell anyone, so I went back to Michigan. You didn't tell anyone about the sale? Or the I close. had to tell my staff, you yeah. know, like, hey, we're going to, you know, she's not buying it. Um, you know, let's resume as if everything's normal. I, I kept buying a little bit, but I knew I was like, ironically enough, it was in October. Mm. I, I was like, I'm going to go back for one month and I'm going to wrap up shop for one month. Mm -hmm. So I showed up October 1st and I didn't bring any merchandise with me. And that's the first thing. I'm like, she doesn't have her suitcases. Yeah, right. <laughs> And I did a couple pop-ups, which we've done in the past, but I, I definitely I was taking inventory out of the store and I was showing up at different universities, sorority houses, moving it at full price. I was like, I'm not going out with discount. No, no, no. You're going out and giving them an opportunity to buy yes. there and it's a unique experience. Yes, and, and it was yeah. all new merchandise. It wasn't sort of that no. leftover stuff anymore. Sure. And then in the last week, I made an announcement, but we did it, I think, really beautifully on social media. It was, um, I had a friend put together a campaign. She has a social media marketing company. She didn't charge me really. I think her heart was like broken for yeah. me too. And yeah. she just made these beautiful images and these kind of cool quotes that like, it's it's a new season for us. Like it values us growing up and we're moving on to things. Yeah. It was so eloquently put that you were watching it. You're like, oh my God, this metamorphic. Oh wait, they're, oh, they're, they're gone. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, basically, you sort of, like, gracefully bowed out. Yeah. Um, and you could get out of your leases, no problem. You were, like... So that's the beautiful, like, sad story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Of the sale. I, I don't know. I'd like to say, yeah, the emotional full no was maybe why she backed out. But it was on the space. So, specifically, we had the lease terms. This was the plaza I was in, the anchor store to bring everyone in, which more people yep. came. My terms were incredible. So for this 3,000 square foot Because you were the anchor tenant. You got a good deal. Yeah. 1,000 bucks a month. For, for 3,000 3, square feet. Are you kidding me? Brand new build out. It was stained concrete floors. Um, I think we had like 23 foot ceilings with rafters. Uh, beautiful lighting throughout. A back room that was like, we had a small galley kitchen. This is like a furniture showroom. Yes. <laughs> like what? The bathroom. Like it was stunning. I we chose it. the wallpaper. It's amazing. It was incredible. Drinking champagne. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we that were in there for like three years of $1,000 a month. So during the terms of the sale coming up, wow. um, you know, I listed what we were paying in rent and she wanted to keep that space. And she was just like, oh my God, yes. Yeah, of course. So I called the <clears throat> landlord and I was like, hey, you know, I'm in the middle of selling the business. Uh, we're staying. Don't worry. The new buyer wants to stay in there. I just need you to transfer the lease to her as of this day. Can you get this drawn up? We've done XYZ work for you. Yeah. Same store, same name, just yeah. different owner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we just need to put her name on and take my name off. Yeah. And she's like, not a problem. Next day she calls me. And so this was a few months before we were supposed to close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says, holy cow, Jackie, <clears throat> how have you flown under the radar at $1,000 a month? I was like, I literally send you a check every month. Like, I'm not sure if yeah, you got it or don't look Flying under the radar. Right. It's, I exist. Yeah. I've right. seen you walk by a few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And there's no way I can extend those terms to her. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe that's something you guys can discuss. Yeah. Um, getting out of this. Yeah. So I call her as like a courtesy call. Yeah. Like, give her a heads up. And I was like, listen, she's not going to do the same terms, but how far could she really jump from a thousand? You know, right. Like, three times is what she wanted to jump it to. And now she's probably thinking like, maybe that store is not 100% worth it or that location. Yeah. So I think that definitely <laughs> that's hilarious. It. But that doesn't make or break a business, no. right? It's that's just one like, location, that's... and that's just one rent. Yeah. No, and you it was could one, discount the one line item. Price. That's what I said. Yeah. It was right. a selling point that I had going for me. We'll discount a little bit. Yeah. I'm sorry, that didn't work out for you. Yeah. The revenue in that location is our oldest location. Mm-hmm. Oh, fully supports that. How do you think I was able to run this business long distance for all right. these years? Right. The numbers were always there and working it in worked. my favor. Yeah. Still gonna work. Just fine. Yeah. Wow. Thousands a beautiful number. Yeah. But that was part of my decision too. Okay. So the landlord not only said I won't do that for her, but starting January first, uh, I'm gonna bump you to that rate as well. Wow. And could do that legally based yes. on your lease. Okay. Based on the terms that we had. At that point, I think we were month to month or something. Wow. Or yeah, it was. Yeah. We both had a way in and out so easily. I, I understood. Yeah. Like that is a great rate, like I just said. But for me, once again, I had, my heart's broken. Yeah. I spent a year breaking up with this business and I'm like, man, we're going to pay, you know, there's not. Yeah. yeah. And so you that, didn't renew. We didn't renew. Okay. And like I said, we just bowed out gracefully. And you had to pay your lawyer. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst part, isn't it? Oh my it? God. Yeah. That didn't change. He wasn't like, oh, oh shucks. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, bye. <laughs> He's like, here's this invoice for your travels yep that's the worst he's in italy i was like if you oh he's with your lawyer in italy (laughs) (laughs) oh jp i'm the lawyer not like on a yacht one of us is getting paid today don't know he was on a yacht one day no (laughs) get off the yacht i'm not paying that bill That's outstanding. He bought wow. the yacht. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Same lawyer was involved in that transaction. Uh-huh. That one uh-huh. went through. <laughs> so then, yep. what happens? So what's your next move? You're still in LA. You're a little. I'm still you're in LA. Upset. I am. You're but recovering. I have this itch for brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm in an area where Brooke from Good Milk, yep. um, her shop is. So it's Washington. Sonata. Episode two on the podcast. Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Brooke. What a She's legend. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Next door to her, she was renting a space from a woman who had a Pilates studio. And their lobby just had nothing going for it. And mm. I was like, I can make this So just store. like the, the lobby area, the front of it. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. And I knew that they only put up a wall between Brooke and her studio. Yeah. And I was like, could we knock out this so I can have access to like Brooke's customers? Your customer is going into the Pilates studio. The girls are doing nothing with like this literally storefront. That's super creative. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And, and they like accept 300 it. Three hundred square feet. Right. Wow. And it was a friend of a friend, and she's like, "Sure, <clears throat> this number one thousand keeps following me around." And she's like, "What do you? Yeah, yeah, just pay me a thousand bucks." And it's like, now for three hundred square feet, not three thousand. Yeah. Right. Square feet. right. 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 So I did it, and we had it like custom fitted with these beautiful racks, and it was like a little jewel box of a store. But I did quickly realize it was like I've never been in my own stores like this. So I'm back there like waiting for a customer, yeah, like not knowing how to use the POS system <laughs> properly. I'm like, how do I? I want to give you a discount, but um, just right. take it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big part too. That was a learning curve. I was like, no, you you like the business side of this. Yeah. You've never been in there. Yeah. I'm like oh, season looks great on you. Right. <laughs> that, that wasn't me. <laughs> right. Um. So after about six I like that her name is Susan. You know, yeah. Oh, it's you know definitely your audience. Susan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're definitely telling Susan. How's Jack? Or Linda, yeah. right? Or yeah. Linda. Right. Yeah, right. Deborah. Karen. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So that Sorry to the Susan. These are all my Linda. second grade yeah. teachers Karen's that were. Karen's a little hard. Yeah. yeah. They're all my aunt's names. So yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Same. <laughs> so six months and I, it was fun because they let me blow the hole through the wall. So I got to hang out with like Brooke and her like juicy cool. milk crew had the bodies people, but that area is still under so much development. It's kind yeah. of where Vista meets Culver City. Yep. It's so cool. And it's really cool. It's a cool like, vibe. Hold in, like, hold out. We're going to be like in great company soon. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's talking about the development across the street, which is kind of happening now. Yeah. That <laughs> Monotonies is going in at the corner, and I was like, they're still not here. Yeah. It takes time. And development <laughs> takes time. Yeah. So much it's a time. Struggle. Yeah. And it was it was more like a passion thing for me. And I couldn't get it out of my blood. I was yeah. like, I just love this retail thing. But after six months, I was like, after holiday was over, I was like, I don't know. Eh, I'll and JP's back, back from Italy at this point? Yes. Yeah. And what was that like? What was so he doing? When he comes, <laughs> when back, he comes back, 
Oh, because right. I'm here, what he was doing there. Yeah. No, no, no. Friend. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Throw him under the bus while you're at it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. It was a baby moon for guys. His wife. Was I'm like, sorry, what? Wait, was the wife there? No. I was what? like, that's not that's a baby moon. Not that's a, a thing. bachelor party. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That is not a, a thing. a baby bachelor party. I'm having yeah. a baby moon every weekend. <laughs> that is a bachelor party. Until the baby party. shows up. Yeah. yeah. No, you're not having a baby either. And what? What is this is thing? he a good salesperson? How did he convince he you get, to yeah. go to Italy? One, two, for a baby moon. I, that's <laughs> not his baby, <laughs> and the <laughs> wife is there. The mother of Maybe the child. Maybe he should have sold your company. Is in there? I think so too. I could have put wow. it on. Wow. I know. Okay, all that's right. interesting. Have him on next. Tell you all. <laughs> yeah. So then, but you have to break the news to him. Do you do it on the phone? I did it on the phone, Let's and see. It, it was devastating for me. I was like shook by it. It was like my first real heartbreak with the business. You know, things are tough in business, but I think. What I did learn from that is I could have better better protected myself. Oh, by the way, she has stores now um, no. in the area. So I, I think only that was sort of, I never had okay. anger. I was like, oh, I could have like, yeah. could have better protected myself with that. Mm. Or at least she couldn't open for one year thereafter, whatever it was. Yeah. And that was never in place. So that's mm. like my biggest takeaway from that. It's just like protect yourself because essentially I did consult for one year. Yeah. Right. That's what ended up happening. She, next you taught. And you gave her all the info she and how the business, business. worked. Yep. And then she just took that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's, that's too bad. I don't think it was her intention for doing it. Sure. But, um, but that's part of it. Yeah. Then yeah. she got literally everything. My, you know, dozen years of experience in a year but not your time now so now no. so you did the six months in the store and that and then what happened would you so we had already started i actually started the candle company uh with a girlfriend of mine a poffin right after a poffin yeah so for people who are can see this we have or are listening we have all these yeah. candles in front of us super beautiful mm -hmm. um why did you decide to do a candle company out of everything I sold, so a lot of it was, we did about 75% clothing, the other 25% was apothecary and accessories. And what I loved the What's most- What's apothecary? Apothecary are <laughs> candles. So- <laughs> it's, it's a good, I don't know what they are. I thought it was a brand and you were saying it. Well, it, it's- not anthropology, dude. That's anthropology. Wait, what, so what is it? Apothecary. For people listening, not for me. Right. Can we talk about what- It's definitely for you. <laughs> Let's be honest here. I guess it's the intersection of like, um, wellness goods and beauty goods so you could call like bath salts an apothecary item okay so back in the day perfume you know, huh? candles perfume, candles okay yeah. so the things oh, like the at the service. front of the register yeah and okay candles is one of them books <laughs> yes. that you put on at a coffee table maybe some coasters home and gift that's home and gift yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well hold up not apothecary so here here's a good analogy okay why don't you just tell me what it is romeo and juliet do you know when they they want to like go in their life together this is a good example they <laughs> they go to an apothecary you know this sort of guru behind the apothecary who makes them their special elixir so back in the day it used to be like take this for your ailment it's like a a they would be like chemists used, that would like put things together. A natural chemist. Yeah. With herbs and different things. Yes. Okay. So the chemical essential oils expanded. fall under that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think everyone at home has it. So, and <laughs> okay. that's part of our name. So, apothin is the first few letters of apothecary, mm -hmm. oh. the last few of doyen. And doyen is that sort of throwback word to a predominant woman in her field. Oh, it's like cool. a ranking woman. Doyen. Doyen. I like they that. Don't say much no, I've never heard that. Wow. And that's only because in the beginning we actually had a. Um, oh, yeah. I have heard apothecary though. You know, it's funny. I heard it on the last Baby Moon I was on. <laughs> we were playing around with baby names and Doyen came up. All the guys are doing. Are doing all of our apothecary. Uh, an apothecary review. Diane, yeah. Doyen. Yeah. Well, thank you for the education. So I just have to know, like, what was he doing when he got back? You know, obviously his trip got. Cut short, I would imagine. The bus right? just keeps coming for JP. I, so. <laughs> I have to know this. Because yeah. if you were doing this, I'd be like, why don't you just stay in Italy forever? You know? It was coming to an end. I think he was there the whole week. And I think the whole point of the timing was he would end up coming back in, in time, like for us to like to celebrate. To or, celebrate. Or yeah. just like, whoa, like I kind of needed him there because there was gonna be a morning I'd wake up and what I've known is no longer mine. So he ended up, I think he came back like two days later, but that was after like me breaking down on the floor. Yeah. And he was really supportive. Um, oh, good. He's always had a really great nine to five corporate job. Okay. He's an IT auditor. Okay. Um, Don't know, know what, what that, that is. is. That's yeah, apothecary to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you either. <laughs> he's not a joy end. <laughs> no. No. So, okay. He came so, back, he was supportive. So you're doing 25% of the, of the goods that you're selling are apothecary. Yes. And you... Candles are a percentage of that. 
Yes. Okay. As well as the fragrance, body lotions, all of that. Okay. And I, I selected a lot of brands that I loved. And what I was noticing was a lot were really unclean. And mm. so I'm What does that of, mean? So the ingredients that they're made with. The same way with food that you would always check your ingredient yep. label. Yeah. Um, I started looking into some of these candles and products and they're full of parabens, petroleum. Ugh. Some wicks are made with lead inside of what? them. What? And they're burning that in your house? Yes. It's equivalent to, and so I won't say any brand specifically. People you can't. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> We're already trash Trader Joe's yes. in one of these episodes. Right. You're kind <laughs> of similar in mall brands. We all know <clears throat> yes. a few of those. Oh. Yankee. Um, Whoa, yes. wow, whoa. Bath and body. That's a Massachusetts staple. You, <laughs> you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so my sorry. Goal is eventually, I think there's going to be a lot of regulations, like there yeah. are now, about what we burn and what can be put in candles. And that's where I think I'm a little different. I'm going to stay ahead of that. Because yes. At you one think point, like the, the, the EPA or the Prop 65? The yeah. FDA will. Yeah, really? especially with the wicks, with the petroleum. It's equivalent to lighting a pack of cigarettes like we have here. Like that would be like me lighting a cigarette and putting it in an incense holder. We don't have cigarettes here. No, and no. just letting it like <laughs> be in the house. Carcinogens. What? Um, endocrine disrupting. Wait, really? People don't know this. No, they don't know it and it's not regulated. How did you find um, out? A little bit of research. Okay. And then there's people doing it right. So yeah. there's, there's that group. And then there's people who do do 100% soy. Mm-hmm. Their oils are naturally derived, either essential or you can do synthetics, but there's a small Rolodex of synthetics that you want to use. Okay. And I think synthetics do get a bad rap because just the word in itself. But out of like 3,000 fragrances, 300 of those are actually wildly safe and really mm. sustainable. Okay. Um, no known allergens, carcinogen-free. So we just do our research heavily and make sure that we're using either those yep. or pure essential oils. Okay. Um, and all are blended with that. They're all skin safe, which is nice. And they're free to burn in houses with kids and pets. There's been studies that people who were burning sort of those uh, suburban mall brands for years, and they had to redo the ductwork in their house. And wow. they would come in and they're like, oh, you guys heavy smokers. And these people are like, we just smoke here and life. Just like Yankee candles just, every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they've had to, to redo that. So wow. that's what happened if, if you're in a house with really? these candles burning. Yes. I thought they were just wax. No, if you have a picture on the wall as well, one year of burning, you Stain. know, one of those craft candles, you would take the picture off and you would have a ring around it. It would look as if you smoked in your house. Really? Yeah. Huh, and there's crazy. no regulation around it, but there is education. So it sounds a lot like, of us are doing okay. it right. Um, I feel like we need to put out like a public service announcement. <laughs> I know. That's why I still go out and I'll do events and yeah. fairs because, uh, not because I, I would rather go to the beach on the weekend, <laughs> but it's to educate people. And yeah. I don't think they know. You don't know what you don't know. Right. Um, and I think candles are sort of a mystery product. And I also think there's a misconception with like essential oils as well, and yeah. the synthetics. So that's a big component. And then the wax. So mm-hmm. we use, and I know you mentioned it earlier, um, 100% soy wax. Okay. That's a great wax. Mm-hmm. Anything. Do you buy, like, so. Um, we buy soy wax flakes. Oh, I should have brought you guys some flakes. No. It's a, like, <laughs> so how much are you buying? Are you buying, like, pounds, tons? So we're buying by the pounds. So they come in cases of 50 pounds. And what, what color is it? It's white. It's a white, kind of a creamy like a white. brick? Just like what the wax looks like, right? Yeah. We do flakes okay. because it'll um, melt a little bit faster, but you can buy it in, like, a brick. And form. it doesn't smell. Mm. It There's smells no... really nice. It smells natural. Mm. And then when you, so then you add scents to it, oils to it? We do. How this do you do that? So you melt. About make a candle. Yeah. So you would melt it to 180 degrees, but 100, 185. Yeah. And from that point, you, you need to pour within 10 degrees of that. So you add the fragrance oil, then you stir it in. And how pour. much do you add? Is it like droplets or is it like a shot? It really depends on how strong you want it to be, right? Yeah, there's different percentages. So okay. each type of wax can hold a different percentage of fragrance. Mm-hmm. So, so there's soy different wax can types hold of. Okay, I got gotcha. you. 10 to 12%. So depending on how big the candle is. These are 10 ounce candles with a 7 ounce fill. I like to go on the highest fragrance load that we can. Right. We like to put in here about 0.75 of an ounce worth of fragrance. Okay. So when you get those little essential oil bottles, that's almost the entire thing. How do you and, pick the yeah. oils? This has been three years of like refining things and blending things. Mm-hmm. I like to have a little bit of a variety, but I'm not trying to appease everyone either. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, we don't have any that smell like sugared cookie dough or anything like that. <laughs> 
you know, we'll this is funny. We'll Autumn like, leaves. <laughs> that's, the, that's an honest the, laugh. The harvest, which is kind of autumn-like, but it's more cinnamon, clove, like this one. mold cider. Okay. So just done but where do you get the oils? Wine. Do you are there oil companies? Yeah, there's oil companies out okay, there. Got it. Um, What's this and our one? suppliers. Pacific Potion. That's our like newest one. one. It's like a summery one. Ginger, amber, lotus flower. So Natalia's smelling one of the candles for people listening, and she's in heaven at present. She's like floating, I if like you guys can't see her. Specific potion yep. that we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's really vibrant. That one actually, we brought that in a few months ago, and it's already number three. As Can our you top seller? You know when you like nap after being at the beach all day? That's what it smells like. To this you? is what it smells like when you're just laying there and like yeah. you're, you might still have some like tanning oil this started on. Started to sound like a commercial. And you <laughs> might have like a pina colada next to you, but like in a water. Can you hear the waves? Like napping you before you go out to dinner. And that's this. Wow. <laughs> How many do you make per cent? That's this one. We we pour to order, so our Red big orange. business is wholesale. Oh. Um, We do do direct-to-consumer with, you know, online Online. sales and events, but honestly, so most of your business is wholesale as a buyer. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I set this up to, to be a product they would want price point wise, quality wise. How much is each candle? These retail for 32. That's pretty cheap. That's cheap, right? So we like to say we're affordable luxury. Yeah. Where do you get the glasses? So we, we have a local company here. These candles touch so many hands locally, which is so cool. So okay. I first go pick up the glass. It comes clear with no oh. print on it. I bring it. If it's going to be ambered, we have a guy out in Sun Valley who then ambers it. Oh. So that same glass gets ambered. Then I take the clear glass, the amber glass, and I bring it to someone else on the other side of town to then put our logo on there. The screen is it a sticker? How is it on... No, it's straight printed on the glass, which is really cool. How do they do that? How do they do that? Isn't that awesome? So it's, it's not still raised. done by hand. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. So they make, they, the same way you do a screen print, they have a print and the okay. guy holds it and he rolls it through. And actually the clear with the two colors goes through twice because he has to put that copper back through. And then it goes under this sort of heat dryer. It smells and it delicious. On. Blood orange. Yeah. That one's a good one too. So good. Yeah. So, same wheelhouse as the Pacific. Yeah. All right, I got definitely. Vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't judge me. Can you, tell, can, you, can you tell we need vacation? <laughs> yes. So then. And then I go pick it up. Um, stickers on the bottom are another local company. Wow. Yeah. The paper topper is another. Um, yeah. So our vendors, we have seven vendors to make that candle. What are and the then, costs of making the candle? Oh, I'm sure she doesn't want to re- reveal that, but. Let's just. Less okay, than well, $32. We do, <laughs> yeah. It is. But yeah. our margins. So we can obviously support a really strong wholesale business. Right. Yes. Um, and wholesale deals are typically 50% of your retail, correct. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what we do. Okay. So we you're still making money. The extra margin though. So they only wholesale for 14. Okay. Um, so they can charge 28 to 32. So it's up to 32. them. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. And we give them that. And you still have margin on the 14. Absolutely. Big advice I always tell people is when you're starting a company, make sure you run the math. On the wholesale, because a lot of people think, oh, I'll just sell it to a wholesaler at 80% of my co- or right. my retail price. And that's just not the case. Any yeah. good wholesaler or retailer is going to purchase your product for 40%, sometimes 50%. We had a deal with Barnes & Noble, and they were like, 40%, that's it. Wow. And I was like, that's crazy, guys. Yeah. But we yeah. had margin. and so But you, had, you yeah. could support it. If you can't support it, then that's Right. Not and work. we thought, well, that's fine. You that's know, we have the margin. Amazon. I have a guy who's setting stuff up for us right now. And he was like, I did the math prior to it. I was like, is it about right that I'm only getting about 50% of this? And he was like, that's incredible for Amazon. Are you kidding me? I was like, really? Because I was thinking that as like my wow. wholesale account, but I'm thinking after all the fees. Yeah. So Are you doing FBA? Like no. f- fulfilled by Amazon? No. When you White say label? Amazon, what do you mean? Well, they take whatever percentage of the fee. Also, I think a lot of people don't know this. When we offer free shipping with Prime, it's just yeah. built in. Like yeah. you're still you're still paying for it. Someone's still paying for you're it. You're paying it's, for the shipping. It's not free. Yeah. Right. A lot of brands you'll see if you if you were to even go to a store or on their own website, it's a few dollars more on Amazon. Yeah. Um, but it's free shipping. Right. Well, it's better that way because you hate seeing, and let's say, 40 bucks and feeling. then you see it $6 yeah, in shipping right. and you're like, just, I'd rather just bake it in. Yeah. Please. yeah. It's smart psychologically. That's right. Because then you know how much But also living in LA, change. for me to go yeah. somewhere and buy something could take half an hour. It could take 45 minutes mm-hmm. when I can just <laughs> click online and it'll be there the what? same day. I know. What? It's your time. It's true. My it time is. is precious. So, but there's margin baked into your candle company, even with you shipping them. Correct. Which is great. And yep. so, and they're heavy. And yeah. so the shipping is maybe like five bucks. We actually charge $8 okay. on our website. Okay. 
Do you just use depending like, on where it goes to, if yeah, it just out. We do a lot of free shipping promos, yeah, yeah. and that that's always fun. That's like our number one thing. So, so the margins are there, and I think which is great. You did the math; it I works. I did the math, and that was yeah. the first part of it. You know, and I, I want to support the retailers. That's the big thing. And when you're meeting these retailers, do you know them because of your experience, or is it? So we hired a showroom um, downtown. What does that mean? A showroom okay. to represent the products. So there are sales reps. Cool. Got it. Um, so we're in a showroom with probably 30 other brands. There's two other candle companies in there, but we're all in the same wheelhouse of home and gift. So cool. a buyer goes in there and they're just like, oh, we can buy like, you know, really beautiful journals or yeah. you know, the candles are in there. They do a lot of kind of cool kid stuff. Uh, nice. Tara, who was previously on yeah. Um, yeah. one of Tweak. the episodes. Yeah, yeah Tesoro, yeah. She has been going to that showroom for, I guess, like 20 some years. Wow. And they've been in business. Like, they're kind of the OGs yeah. of the home and gift world, and I knew I wanted them on my side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Karen Allwell Studio for anyone that does have stores. Amazing. So, we give them, they get a commission, it's 15%. Okay. And we also pay a showroom fee. We have, we're represented in LA uh, year round, we're represented in Atlanta's showroom year round, and then they take us to New York now, which is the biggest home and gift show. Uh, in the country wow. twice a year and for seventeen thousand dollars you can you can spend your year doing that so, so seventeen thousand plus fifteen percent so just where just did, to be in these showrooms yes where did you learn of that from being because a buyer I was a buyer and i would go shop at showrooms so i'm like yeah. i'm not gonna i had no idea so instead of you going to all these trade shows you can just hire a buyer or not a buyer, Hire but a, a, showroom. a showroom, showroom and they go out and Correct. sell for you yeah and as long as you've done the math and the fifteen percent margin that they take is baked in. In the showroom, you get cost. free, effectively free marketing, well, free right. labor. I hired a salesperson. Right, it's yeah. too expensive. Sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand. This, I'm going to start yeah. a company tomorrow. I think this is amazing. <laughs> I'm ready. Wrapping the brands. Is yeah, kind of the move. Yeah, but I knew also like I've had huh. people cold call and they're like, "Hi, I'm Linda from <laughs> Linda, <laughs> Linda from Auntie Linda." Brands. Um, and they just make it. I'm like, well, unless you can. Can you send it to me? Can you come yeah. to me? Also, they're mm. thinking I'm in Michigan. I'm in LA. And I'm like, well, I'm in LA. What showroom are you in? Yeah. And if they don't have one, it's I'm not going to buy. Or what shows will you be at? Yeah. And they can't tell me that they'll be in Vegas or New York or Atlanta or LA. I'm not going to see your product. So I knew going in that that would have to be the first investment. Yep. Yeah. And it's paid off. And same thing. Built Credit that card? 15%. <laughs> Credit card and my own personal savings. Yeah. yeah. JP hasn't taken a trip to Italy in years. Right, right. He's sitting well, at home good. waiting. He's just like, I can't wait to quit my IT he auditing. Is. <laughs> He's going to love this. Yeah. Oh, wow. it, you know, it's tough. It's tough. I'm sorry. JP. I got to meet this JP. Right. <laughs> got to right. suss him out. He's an awesome. Brooke kind of did this a little bit too. And I was like, oh, God. Uh-huh. Can't wait to meet your husband. We, we love Dennis. I was actually in Brooke's wedding. Oh, nice. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, they're a great Amazing. couple. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So right now you sell online and then wholesale. Will you also do like Amazon Fulfillment or, or eBay or no? Are you so focused we, on the wholesale? We've been on Amazon for a year with one product sitting on there because once I got in there, I realized it's so sophisticated. Like you really have to know your way around it. And there's mm-hmm. experts for that. They're, around what? The, Amazon. Around Amazon. It's not just the same as your website where you you know put up a product description and a picture no one's going to find you. Yeah. It, no one's going to like... It's all SEO. Yes. And, like, and that's something I don't know. And yeah. That's another big thing. Like, I know what I don't know. And it stopped right about there at tech. Yeah. And you hired for that. Yeah. Yeah. This did is your, actually what Brian... Did JP... Able, was he able to do any of this? He's helpful in terms of like... Auditing. Technical <laughs> things. Yeah. Oh, he loves to audit the business. But I think that's why he supports it. Because yeah. he's like, wow, you're profitable. Yeah, it, pen- it pencils. Thank yeah, you. thank yes. you. <laughs> yeah, everybody just do the math. I mean, that's yeah. that's the biggest advice. Mm-hmm. Add the shipping, add your showroom costs, bake right. that into your, your business, time. and make sure it pencils. Yeah, mm-hmm. we yeah. have labor in there. Yep. I went and sat with um, an accountant, Brooks' accountant, and he was like, "Wow, he's like, so you you went to business school?" And I was like, <laughs> "No, you just it's not about business school. You don't need that. You just have to be smart about your numbers." Like yeah. I thought of every detail. I know. I mean, the wick, it's such a small cost, but it's seven cents. That could make or break after a while. Totally. You start to wonder mm-hmm. where money goes. Right. Yeah. There's a glue dot that sticks it to that. Mm. It's one cent. Like, yeah. I put every single thing into You have that. to. That's smart. And then you have beautiful packaging also that yes. you've invested in. Yeah. Actually Packaging's expensive with... and it's tough. It's hard yeah. to, it's, it's and hard. And it's custom sizes for this stuff, right? Or maybe it it's is. not. And we chose yeah. that size and that shape because it would protect the candles during shipping. Yep. When we're shipping so it's to smart. wholesalers, yeah. 
I mean, that could, if the case breaks, so we have like little inserts that'll go in okay. to keep it from rocking yeah. down. Um, cool. But if, if it drops, that rim around there, it's going to protect it. We can stack them on top of one another. Wow. And it makes an that. impact on the shelf. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. It looks really good. Definitely. Now the names. How do you decide? So we're looking at this one. It's called Flower Child, and then this one is called Bourbon Sandalwood. Ooh. How do you come up with the names? So <laughs> some are really just specific. Blood orange is blood orange. You're driving me crazy right now because you're making all this sounds. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Ooh, smell that one. Tobacco vanilla. Oh, that smells. That smells like Christmas to me. Oh, that's nice. That one, okay. that's nice. It's mm -hmm. for the person who wants that sweeter. Yeah, candle. but it's, it's not like warm. caramel vanilla, you know. No. What? That's nice. How do you how do you decide on the names? So it, it's like I, I was telling you guys earlier. Sometimes I'll ask people. I'll come up with a new sound. Like Pacific <laughs> Potion was the hardest. Triggering <laughs> Nick. Okay. I was oh, like, sorry, Nick. It smells like the beach. Back away from the candle. <laughs> At the end, we'll just like clang them all. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can't see Nick, but he is pacing up and down. So mad. Put him on the cloth. <laughs> God, he's such a stickler for cloths. The name, it's important. When you're selling online, it's important. Because I think sometimes people will buy it based off the name and mm -hmm. our descriptions that we use. We don't have it on the packaging, but as we were talking about it, it made me think I should. So we do a... Smells like, which we can list the notes, smells like ginger, amber, coconut, pear, and then it feels like. Yeah. Feels oh. like coming back from cool. the beach. Cool. I love that. Day, and then we do pears well with. Ooh, I like that. What do you list, do you list in there? Yeah. Um, so we'll say like, you know, good company or Motown Records. Oh. So it kind of I was thinking wine, thing. but that's the alcoholic yeah. in me. We do do <laughs> drinks, so obviously the bourbon wine. Yes. And... I think people love that. It's so interesting to me because when I think about naming an item, if you're going strictly from a tech component, mm -hmm. you're thinking no one's going to Google bourbon sandalwood candle. Right. Right. But right. they will Google, or maybe they won't. I don't really know what they would Google for a candle, but if it was a product, it would be like red and red t shirt, right. black shirt, white t shirt. If there's and it's descriptive. What they want in it, it'll be 100% soy candle. So mm -hmm. back to okay. like the ingredients, if you are going to get, sometimes they say soy blend. Soy is not the only great one. You could do coconut or apricot wax. Mm -hmm. As long as it's either blended with those three or 100% pure of each That's of one those. of those. Okay. Got it. Anything else, you're probably getting bottom of the barrel petroleum. That's disgusting. Yeah. It's really disgusting. Is it, is it bad for you? Yeah. Petroleum. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Just I kidding. would think so. <laughs> I mean, one light, you're fine. Or you're sitting in a restaurant that didn't know about it. You're there yeah. for an hour, but like to burn in your home. Not cool. Um, if you're mindful about what you eat, you should be mindful about what you're using in your yeah. mom's products. That's that's not what's in Vaseline, right? Um, I believe it is. Petroleum jelly is what Vaseline is. Yeah. We're just trashing all the brands today. This I is know. great. I'm, we're going to throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. Yes. And so uh, um, most of your business is, is wholesale? It is. But and we do have a division. We do custom candles. We white label for a lot of people. Okay. And oh, interesting. Yeah, this is what um it's a money maker, you guys. Yeah, wow. this is like you showrooming. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah. You, yep. That's awesome. So um, you have like a candle making so one one revenue model is you take you have excess soy, let's say, and so you just put it into motion for other brands. Right. So do they yeah. give you like a flavor profile or what it wants you what they want it to smell like and then yes. you make it and, and then they put their own? Because of our integrity and our ingredients, we're yeah. already vetting all that. They want yeah. a candle just as clean as ours. How did you get into that business? This started Were people early like, I love year. your candles, can you make our can candles? Can you make ours? Yeah. Okay, wow. Uh, sometimes my vendors will call and they're like, I just had someone come in, I told them about your company. They own a denim company here in LA. Would you make their candle? I was like, well, I'll talk to them. We require pretty high minimums. Of course. Higher yeah. wholesale. Yeah. yeah. What, what would be the MOQ? 100 units. Okay. To start. Okay. And that that's to do something almost identical to what we have. Okay. That's, do you want our glass, this size glass? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do amber, clear. We can tint <clears> it like this pink one over here. But for the most part, because we're Ooh. taking from our bulk inventory. That's sure. why we keep the price what it is. Yeah. And you're moving excess inventory. Yes. Which is amazing. You so you've really figured this out at every yeah. angle. This is, a yeah. lot, I like it. So I direct Smart. people. And I also make sure that we put our brand on the back. It says created by a pop in with our small triangle. Mm. I would never straight up, when I say white label, I've had someone call me on it too. They're like, it's more of a collaboration if your name is on there. Yeah. Like, call me on Oh, Go Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> Susan's Susan a stickler. A collaboration. <laughs> stickler for words. <laughs> no, I am. Yeah. yeah. No. No. 
But you so are by putting that on there. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we're on there. And I, yeah. I want other people to see that. Because for me, at the end of the day, I, I have a brand. And I don't want to be removed from that brand. Totally. Completely. Yeah. And people will pay more for a good quality product from somebody yes. that's reputable. Yeah. You know? Stella McCartney and Adidas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> don't know what that means. wellness brands. I think it's because yeah. all my friends are in food and beverage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've done Sweet Laurel's Candle, cool. Owl, Venice, the, like, the Bone Rock Company. Yes. We're actually, we did go out of our box and we did one for the Parks Apparel. It's like this women's sort of cool camping apparel. They just do really beautiful things. Cool. They have these enamel camping mugs and they're like, can we turn these into candles? Wow. That's when I said... How many are we talking? Yeah. They're like 6,000 units. I was like, got a deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> we usually do 10,000, right. but yeah. for you yeah. guys, for you. Uh, yeah. we can make this work. And they're really cool looking. That's awesome. So yeah. how do you grow the business? Is just getting in more stores? Is that your... That's right now, that's the model I'm working towards. Okay. Ooh, and how do you how Patagonia do you do that? with like Patagonia colors on I the... I love Patagonia. That would be cool. So how do you do that? So let's say um, you reach out to a company, you send them the product... Yeah. And then is it as simple as they like it and then they'll put it in the store or is yeah, it a so little more complicated than that? Yeah, so they're in the showrooms. Right. They usually write orders the same way fashion works, you know, months in advance. So in mm-hmm. February, they wrote for what they were going to be getting for like three, four months. Yeah. And then when we were at the last show in August, they wrote all of holiday going into even like the beginning of spring. So I kind of know in advance what we're looking at with wholesale orders. Yeah. All the while, we're acquiring new business. So our retention rate i'd like to get that up so if someone asked me that recently we keep about 60 percent of our people but all the while we're replacing whoever drops off when you say your people you mean your accounts our accounts in yeah. stores in stores got it yeah okay. retailers okay. we have like a low point of entry to grab the product so i think sometimes people will will test it we I ask see. for 18 units minimum six of each cent so you can try it you would get like three of these literally six of each and you can have it in your store so smart. Wow. the pricing that's on such this. a small amount to have it to is. So we Very can just keep well the done. numbers moving yeah. yeah but then i think you know when they sell out there's other cool exciting things that these stores have going on you kind of get forgotten you have to knock on the door and you're like hey yeah. you want to reorder they're like oh yeah so, yeah yeah so do you have people that like knock on like sale like doors of boutiques Me and stuff still. yeah well, our sales team is always working for us but yeah. i have never stopped Okay. So I acquire just as much business as they do for ourselves. And it's usually the larger ones that yeah. I, I can get. It's smart that you do that. I mean, yeah. the CEO has to be at some point. I'm thinking of like yeah. four home home and like housewares shops I've walked into in the past like week that I'm like, you know, I'd be like, hey, you guys know about this candle? And they'd be like, yeah, sweet, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I still walk it's in. Cool. And we make these sample packs. So I thought oh. as well, I made a tea light of all these scents, put them in a small pack. The line sheet was like the little postcard within it. And I send that, and it feels like a gift. It's yeah. so and it's like, smart. That not just so an smart. email. You literally yeah. got every one of my candles small. Granted, a tea light's not going to have the same throw right. as the large candle. But they understand but that. But I have to smell. Yeah. And that's huge. And it, it blows my mind when I've given everyone this idea that more candle companies don't do that. Yeah. Or even beauty companies that do right. send these samples and right. make them beautifully packaged. Right. I mean, yeah. there's so many. This is the thing about entrepreneurship. It's like a lot of the things that you're saying make perfect sense. But mm-hmm. that's, that's what distinguishes so, you, yeah. right? And yeah. so because you actually do it. Yeah. And I think that's what separates you from yeah. most people, Yeah. Mm-hmm. which is great because Executing you're actually doing it. it. Yeah. yeah. What's next for the brand? Are you thinking candles for the next two, five years? Or are you thinking you'll start here and then maybe grow the company into other? I call us a home fragrance company with our flagship product being candles. Okay. Even though it's kind of our, it is our only product right now. We sell matches, these wick trimmers right here, which Those are, awesome. are incredible. It's a nice piece, <laughs> it's also. It's a nice piece, but it's practical. Also, how clean we just talked about the candles are. If you were to relight, you know, a wick that's been lit over and over again, that charred top right there, that has carcinogens in it. Take it off. Right. Like, wow. you, you don't want to relight something you burnt. Wow. Um, yeah, there's nothing good in that. So, that removes it. It also keeps your hands clean. And it's something you want to keep out. It's and beautiful. same thing with the cloak. Yeah. I was, I was telling Diego when we came in, if you want to put out a candle, you set it over top. It takes the oxygen away. And now you don't have a smoke-filled house. Right. It undoes the beautiful scent you just lit. Yeah. Now it smells like a child's birthday party in here. Yeah. Put that over it. Or Susan's cool. birthday. Yeah. Anybody. Yes, anyone. So, so would you recommend putting it over it right after you blow the candle out? No, you, or you, you, you put it, it over to blow it out. Oh, as like a... Yeah. yeah. Wow. See... 
that's not common sense to you, but no. apoth. What is the word? Ap- Apothecary. Apothe- See, I don't know what that <laughs> means. That's obvious to me. That's just science. And wouldn't you want that sitting out? So What's the little beautiful. one called that you they, they used to use? The snuffer. Snuffer. Yeah. That's so it. If, or use your another fingers. great name. Yeah. Like you get them wet and you put it out, and that'll stop the smoke too. Yeah. So it's all on how you want to. I do try it. not to do that. But as we progress into more, more products, this is what I want to do. I want to offer something beautiful, practical, yeah, functional. useful, functional. Yeah. It's and will great. you do other fragrances like for, for people? Like yeah. colognes, perfumes, yeah? Yeah, I would okay. love to. We're actually okay. playing around with room sprays. Some people just don't like lighting things. Yeah. Like it, or they have kids around. So we'd like to make the entire collection accessible to room sprays. Like furniture stuff. sprays. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Linen sprays. I would definitely get that. That's awesome. Tell everyone where they can find you and yeah. your product. Yeah, and you personally. So- well, you can find me at Jack L. Bradley on Instagram. J A C Q L. Bradley, B R A Z L E Y. And then Apothen is just at Apothen, A P O T H E N N E. We've been playing with taking off to Los Angeles because our trademark is actually just for Apothen. Okay. okay. So we can be Apothen any city. Yeah, true. Which is kind of cool. And if you're cool. showrooming yes. everywhere, then it's really not just Brooklyn. It yeah. can be Sounds good Austin, too. whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Cool. Well, if you're interested in candles, please check out Apothin. Apothin. <laughs> That's a tough one for him. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the podcast yeah. and yes, sharing you. your story. Super inspiring. This is amazing. <laughs> yes. We here at Start of the Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think about the show. Make sure to give us a rating on iTunes. Anything over five stars is the only way to go. Our music is composed by Double Touch. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Startup the Storefront. For more information on the products and businesses featured on the show, check out the links in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.